So you must also do, on the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collection when I come. And when I come, whomever you approve by your letters, I'll send to bear your gift to Jerusalem. But if it is fitting that I go also, well, they'll go with me. A couple points that we want to consider. Paul was basically going throughout all the region to the different churches that, that God had used him to plant. And he was taking up a collection, a financial gift from all the different churches for him to bring back to the church there in Jerusalem. The church in Jerusalem was struggling, struggling financially. And they were falling apart. And God, and God said, Paul, you need to raise up this financial gift and bring it to him. Why were they struggling financially? Let me, let me submit a couple of different reasons for you. Number one, there was persecution going on in the church there in Jerusalem. That's where the church started. Remember, these were, these were Jewish people that had all these, this religion, this religious uh, system set up. And now Jesus comes in and says, I'm your Messiah. And the bulk of the Jews at that time said, no, you're not. We're looking for this, this Messiah to come in and squash the Roman government and to set up this earthly kingdom. You're not. So the bulk of the Jews at that time rejected Jesus as the Messiah. So the few that did accept Christ as the Messiah, they were ostracized, kicked out of the temple, kicked out of their jobs, struggled because of the persecution. Not only was it financial persecution, but it was physical persecution. People were going to their death saying that, yes, I saw Jesus. I know he's the Messiah. He, was, he, was, he, was, he died, he buried, he was raised again. I believe. And don't you know, the 12 disciples, every one of them was martyred for their faith, by the way. Except the, the Apostle John, who was, ended up kicking it in Patmos and, and passing away over there. But everyone else went down dying, saying, you know what? You can, you can tell me to say that that's not true, but I saw it with my own eyes. I saw what happened. So there was this persecution going on, and, th and that, that added to, think about this, if you get laid off, some of you guys know in our economy today, it's, it's, times are tough for some of you guys, you, got, you lost your job. That was what was going on as a result of this religious persecution at the time. Number two, there was a famine. In Acts 11, I'll read it for you, Acts 11, 27 through 30, there was a famine in the area. In Acts 11, it says, then one of them, Agabus, one of their prophets, he stood up and showed by the Spirit... There's going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined, here it is, to send relief, this relief, financial relief package, we know about those, right, to the brethren dwelling in Judea, right there in Jerusalem. And this they also did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So, this collection was being raised up from all the different churches, and now he's giving them instructions as the Corinthian church was asking, well, what's our part in this whole, in this whole deal? This famine. Two things that this, this, this collection did. Number one, again, it just aided practically in helping them. But number two, it started bridging the gap between Gentiles or non-Jews, which the bulk of these churches that Paul was starting were. Not, they were non-Jew. Well, there, it was bridging the gap between Jews and Gentiles. Because now... These Jews living in, Jewish Christians living in Jerusalem are getting this blessing financially from these Gentiles. So, you Gentiles, you, you, I can't believe, oh, you just hooked me up with like dough so I can actually live? That is exactly what happens with Christmas dropping. One thing, listen to this. One thing that happened in Calvary Boca was a young Jewish woman, single mom, struggling Talk about famine. Talk about uh, this no money. And someone nominated her. So our team went in to her home, cleaned up like this, this apartment that was a wreck. She was working two, three jobs, no time. We go in there and, and then we, we knew that she was Jewish. So put, instead of putting a tree up, we just kind of put some, some like a wreath and that kind of stuff. But a bunch of gifts for her daughter and practical way to bridge the gap between Gentiles and Jews and just love, just practically show the love of Christ. That week, she shows up to Calvary Chapel. Pastor Bob gives an invitation. You want to receive Christ? Who's the first one? Why was that? God was bridging the gap between 
Gentile and Jew. Exact same thing that, that was one of the things that was happening right here. They were investing practically. Speaking of famine, I want to ask you guys a question. Are you guys feeling the effects of the economy? Do you have physical famine going on in your life? Turn to 1 Kings 17. I want to give you guys hope. I want you guys to be able to see <laughs> what God's word says about what to do when you are in a physical famine. When the resources are dwindling in the area of, of stewarding God's resources properly. Look at 1 Corinthians, or excuse me, 1 Kings 17. Starting in verse 8, now before I get into it, this, this, there was a severe drought going on. Elijah the prophet had prophesied that this was going to happen. And sure enough, that's where they find themselves. Uh, severe, no water, no food in the area. People are losing hope. People are in despair. Similar to our culture right now. Now listen to what the God's word says. And I want you guys to think, if I'm in that situation right now, what do I do? 1 Kings 17 and 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I've commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Hey, hook me up with a little water and a cup, please, that I may drink. Verse 11. And, she, and as she was going to get it, he called her and said, Hey, Grab me some grub, too. Grab me a little morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I don't have any bread. I got a little handful of flour in a bin, a little oil in a jar. See, I'm gathering these couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my, my son, that we may eat it and die. Now you think, pause right there. Now you think you're in like a famine right now physically. I don't know how I'm going to pay my mortgage. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Now, this woman literally was saying, going to my last meal, single mom, I can't make ends meet, the, the, the famine's so severe, I'm going to grab a little sticks, we're going to cook up a little bread, we're going we're to grub, it's lights out, we're done dealing. No hope, we're done. Despair. Can you feel that right now? Can you feel the despair? Are you there? Now listen to this. Look at verse 13. And Elijah, right, again, this man that represents God. Elijah said to her, don't fear. Go and do as you have said, but, and I want you guys to underline this, but make me a small cake from it. What's that next word said? First. Make me, first, uh, make me a small cake first. And bring it to me, and afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The bin of flour, it shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. Pause right there. That's the challenge. Here this woman is going to die with her son. And Elijah, the guy representing God, says, That's great, go do that. But you know what? I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge your faith right now. Make me a small cake first. What are you talking about? Dude, I don't have enough for me and my, and my son. You're telling me to make you one first? You know how that relates to our life? God says, bring me the tithe to the storehouse so that you may be fed. Everything will work out. And you go, what? Like, if I give a tenth of my income? Done. They're going to come, they're going to kick me out of my house. I'm going to be done. Don't have, I won't have any food. You kidding me? No way. I'm going to pay the light bill. I'm going to pay everything else first. God challenges you. says, no, you pay me first. I'm going to take care of you. Mirac it's going to be miraculous. It's not going to add up financially, but it will happen. Now watch. That's the challenge. So the question is, how is she going to respond? 15. Look at that. So she went away and she did according to the word of Elijah. She trusted and she and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Pause right there. God's word never fails. 
My mind says that does not.